Allahumma salli alayhi As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Inshallah somebody can confirm they can hear me um, Allah Yo, awesome Alhamdulillah <coughs> Okay We're nearly there For 8, eight o'clock Okay بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الفاتحة إلى حضرة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام بنية الفتح والقبول والشفاء والتوفيق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين عمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين نويت التعلم والتعليم وتذكر وتذكير والنفع والانتفاء والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدعاء إلى النهدى ودلالة الخير بتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وكربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى وبعد إن الله سبحانه وتعالى إن شاء الله ببركة in our session and give us tawfiq to learn something take something away from here um, a few slides um, before, uh, yeah, a few slides behind from the point where we uh, finished last week. So we were looking at pillars of Salah, Fara'id, and we looked at um, Takbir Tahrima, the opening Takbir, the prohibiting Takbir. Tahrima meaning from Haram. It, it, it prohibits those things that are normal outside the prayer. As soon as you enter the prayer, they're not permitted anymore. So it's called the prohibiting Takbir. And it's also called the opening takbir. Um, and this, we mentioned this, it's the key to the prayer. You have to s praise God to enter it. Um, so that's the sort of first um, pillar, first fard, if you want to call it. And then we've got, you must stand when you're where you're able to stand. So sometimes people say to me, oh, I prayed in the car. And um, you know, how, how did you pray in the car? You know, they'll say to me something like, oh, I couldn't pray outside. So why? People, there's lots of people there and so forth and it's not really justified you're able to stand and pray you know go out and pray you know if you parked your car and you needed to you know what is it this is, i guess this is quite normal these this happens where somebody needs to go to the toilet relieve themselves you know, you, you don't do it in the car you get out you find a place you know and so here people put effort in and they find a place to you know appropriate place as well and so in a similar way, you know, uh, uh, when you when it's easy and it's something that people normally do for those type of things, then how can you find an excuse, a lousy excuse sometimes that I couldn't find a place to pray unless I prayed in my car? Go out, go in the service station, go find a place, you know, some shelter when there's real fear that might be something else. So you must stand where when you're when you're able to stand because it's a pillar. And then Qira'a from recitation from Quran. Quran, it means something that is recited or read. And Qira'a and Qara'a, Iqra, you know, they have a similar meaning. So it's to recite. So you must recite something from the Quran al Karim. When you're praying alone, then your, um, your what is it, your recitation um, will be, um, what is it, your prayer. When you're praying alone, then your recitation um has to be loud okay and if you're praying behind an imam then it suffices you know the imam's recitation is your recitation so um but there must be restoration and then ruku is bowing um and then sajda prostration we have two in every single rak'ah and then you have the last the shahud the last sitting um which is a key part of the prayer this this can become a tricky point because if you don't if you add and say for example you're praying Fajr and you you don't sit the last sitting you get up if you get up okay and and you add a an additional um, rakaah an additional unit then you lose the last sitting why because it's not the last one anymore because you've added an additional unit a third unit so it's sort of missed um, you know it's missed its place its place is at the end of the prayer and the end of the prayer meaning that if i'm praying fajr then it must be the two cycles that i pray for fajr and uh, if i add the third then it's sort of lost 
and so this is this gets a little tricky at some point maybe we might cover it um but for now we won't look at that now and then you've got we looked at the necessary acts of prayer and so just to differentiate again if i miss these you know or i don't do them without a valid excuse then the prayer will be invalid it won't it won't work um and these are things that i for, if i forget to do then um I, I do a forgetful prostration and if I forget to do that then my prayer is valid but if I intentionally miss them the prayer is valid but with um, karaha with um, you know there's dislike elements of it so you must repeat the prayer okay you must repeat the prayer um, so we looked at the uh, uttering the tech I said to you, say actually saying Allahu Akbar okay um, as for an obligation you must praise God um, and so you could have said anything at that point. And so this is revision, right? Remaining motionless in the integral. This is common. You see a lot of people, people have fast-paced lives. Things move very quick. So um, they, their prayer is also in a similar way, you know. And that um, that could be problematic. So we have to learn to calm down. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would go into the cave and, you know, in solitude. And um, of course, in those type of places, you're going to have stillness. Times, times have comes to a standstill, and that's that's needed. Sometimes we need that. The prayer is, is it provides that as an opportunity if somebody wishes to take it, where you just get time time out. You know, you got time to just reflect on other things, more important things. The dunya, the material life, is like that. You see, it's busy, man. And with technology, you know, we're getting so much more in, which I don't know if it's a good thing. I don't think it is. If I look at my childhood, I think it was nice. It was easygoing. There wasn't so much pressure on the mind. You know, I had a really beautiful childhood. And so it's like, you know, when you go out to the park with the friends and you know, in the house, you spend time with your family. And we only had, what is it, terrestrial channels, which were, BBC One, BBC Two, BBC Three, and came BBC Four, and I remember that that was a groundbreaking moment when BBC Five came, and so here, and that was in the nineties, wasn't it? And and unfortunately, it's it's really really busy. The mind's busy. There's no there's no there's no time for rest, and people have no mercy upon their own souls. So you know, with so much happening, and the mind is running at speeds that a lost panda hasn't you know like anything you can run things at a high speed for so long then after that it just tires it out so it, it is never designed to do this type of activity so the prayer is good prayer gives you a break that's why find a way to take it easy with a prayer like it should be a break your soul break and so um, Allahumma salli wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad And I fall into this too, you know we, we, I'm sure we, we can, you know, we can remind each other, right? We can remind each other of this um, And then you've got, um, and then we said how the recitation You know, we looked at the bare minimum of a salah And we mentioned how it's a single ayah So when I'm running out of fajr, uh, time for fajr And I've only got a few minutes like literally two minutes. Can I pray Fajr in two minutes? Yeah, you can if you know how to do it, right? Which is, it's Allahu Akbar. You know, if I've got enough time, I'll read a few ayahs and try to get the whole Fatiha over the two. two. That, ideally, that's the best way. So you just get, even though you can get away with one ayah in each raka'ah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allahu Akbar. You could get away with that. <clears throat> and but, um, yeah, but let's stick to that one ayah. So we looked at that, and then Imam reciting audibly in loud prayers, reciting in silent prayers, and people sometimes mix them up. So you know, you can have your curtains drawn, and you can't see outside. Suddenly, you think you're praying asr as a maghrib and so forth. Um, you know, th these things happen. So if you find yourself reciting loud in a silent prayer, then you you owe a said to sahab. Subhanallah. Somebody asked me um, a few questions, right, to do with the prayer, like. Um, or if I get confused with the number of raka'as, do I do sajjah sahab? And they asked me a few other questions. I said, all of those questions we're doing, 
we answer these questions in the prayer course during the prayer course um, so alhamdulillah um, three or four questions that lady posed to me all of them are answered in these sessions um, and then, then you got the second part of placing the nose on the ground in prostration uh, first sitting and reciting the shahud and this is all wajibad um, so for example if i was supposed to sit the first sitting for Zohar, because Zohar is a four unit prayer, I didn't sit in the first sitting, so I completed two units, and then I got up for the third, okay, carry on, it's fine, you missed the first sitting, so this is the great benefit of knowing the value of each action, when you you know the value of each action, you know exactly what's happened, okay, oh mom, I didn't put the salt into the you know, the, 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 the curry or whatever it is, you say, oh, it's okay, we can always add it afterwards, okay? When I didn't add such and such an ingredient, it's fine. We can we can, we can can buy it. You know, I didn't buy such a thing. I'm not carrying such and such thing with me. It's okay, you can buy it at, you know, duty-free or, and so forth. So it's just, you know, when you know, when you've done a bit of study, you know, it becomes, it becomes easy. Or easier nam. So uttering salam twice and complete the prayer, reciting the width of supplication to like one and it's takbir. So you've got two uh, wajibs there. Um, and then you've got Eid takbir. May Allah bring the Eid. SubhanAllah. How different Eid is today. Allahu Akbar. Um, sunnah acts of salah. So salahs, uh, salah acts carried out by the Prophet. Everything's taken from the Messenger of God. These are additional actions which are, um, they are sunnah. They, we, I, I don't think we should say they are only sunnah. The, the word only, you know, sort of depreciates or devalues the action. We should never speak like that about the Prophet. I, have, I had some books in a box outside my house, and um, wrongfully from my side, they were on the floor, but they're in a box. Um, and somebody so beautiful, he said, he said, I don't think it's appropriate for the name of the Prophet, which is on the book, to be on the floor. And he was so right, and I can't thank him enough. So I raised it and put it on the flower pot, which looks beautiful now. And so, you know, we've all, we have to respect the prophetic way and what he taught us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so here, um, some of those sunnahs are palms based in direction of prep. How, you know, raising my hands is also sunnah. So if I didn't raise my hands and I just uttered the takbir and started my prayer, the prayer is valid. However, this it, it, this is part of the perfection of the prayer. Exactly. Part of the perfection of the prayer. And by the way, if you're thinking, why do you keep looking to your right? Um, it's because I'm not watching for you, by the way. Um, even though my dear team is playing today and they're having a very difficult time, make dua for them. But I'm looking, it's the only thing I can sort of, I, there's a screen of me, right? So I keep looking there to see myself when I should really be looking at you, right? So if you think, if you're wondering, why does he keep doing that? That's why, yeah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So after having uttered takbir and raised their hands immediately, placing folding hands without dropping them, some people do go, Allahu Akbar, and then they drop them to the side and they swing them. Ooh, the bigger the belly, the more the swing, right? Okay. Um, no, you just you just hold them, okay? You don't need to drop them, okay? And so here, um, if, if I didn't hold my hands, the prayer is valid, okay? If I... Let go of my hands, the prayer is valid. Why? Because some say, oh, the prayer is broken. Well, the prayer is not broken. Why? Because that's not a breaker. Holding the hands is a sunnah action, and it's not a wajib, and it's not a fard, so it's not a breaker. Okay, yes, it's not perfect, but it's not a breaker. And so standing upright when uttering the takbir without lowering the head, this can become problematic. So... Um, so you should stand upright. You may lean your head slightly forward, but not too far forward. However, sometimes people, when they're trying to join a congregation prayer and they're late, okay, somebody's finishing off a conversation, my, like my children, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Somebody's finishing off some food and they're, or they're late to the prayer. They run. They run to join because when the imam goes into the bowing, okay, if you happen to 
join the imam in his bowing okay when he's doing ruku and you 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 sort of succinct with him right okay he's still and you're still and you both join then you've joined the the rakah you've got that unit okay and so uh, if you miss that okay you 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 went down and the imam got up okay you've missed a unit then you need to make that unit up so you, what you can find is somebody's coming to the prayer they're diving into the prayer so the point of uttering the takbir which is the key to the prayer and it starts the prayer they're already into the ruku because we said the definition of a bow is that uh, if you lean so far forward that your fingertips touch your knees okay so, so if you were to measure that you'll find at the moment when he said allah Akbar, he was already in about and that prayer would not be valid because there, it wasn't started properly okay so placing the right hand on the left hand beneath the navel for men um precisely praising and for the women we've mentioned before where the women put their hands okay and you got um placing the what is it stand and uh, placing the right hand and praising silently reading the thana I love the thana. I was making supplication the other day and I was like, and I wanted to praise God. So I was thinking, what could I say? And I thought, well, God put the thana for us in the prayer. I'm going to use that. I was making dua. I said, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabarak asmuka wa ta'ala jadduka wa la ilaha ghayruk. So um, it's a beautiful praise, but it's sunnah. So remember that it's sunnah. So if I were to miss it, and this is why when I say, Oh, I've only got two minutes to pray my prayer. I say to you, read an ayah, one verse of the Quran, and go into the bow. Because, and, and by doing that, you've missed all of these things. But look, the weight of these things are that they're all sunnah. And in a moment like that, where you've only got two minutes to pray the fard, then you have to make the right decisions. Okay, you must prioritize. And the priorities are going to be the fard. Okay. The fard and the wajibat. So saying the bismillah silently after uh, we read the ta reading ta'awud, saying bismillah, saying ameen after the fatiha for somebody who's praying behind the imam and somebody who's, re who's re praying their own prayer for them to say the fatiha is also sunnah. The imam lengthening the reciting of the first unit over the second unit of fajr prayer. Fajr prayer is one of those prayers where the Prophet وسلم, established a prophetic example of elongating he will elongate the fajr prayer and there's there's a number of reasons one that fajr is the best time to recite quran so you recite more quran by elongating the unit i guess other reasons other possible reasons are going to be that by by elongating the recitation those who are late for the prayer um, you know they they can catch it yeah they can catch it so uh, people are normally in their homes and they need to get ready and so forth and some uh, find it very difficult to get out of bed and all of those things have been taken into account so and it's also offensive in all the big prayers that the second unit be longer than the first unit by three or more verses it's sort of as long as you're reading verses surahs in order it's fine okay but try to keep in mind you know that you keep the, the first rakahs um, surah is longer than the, the one of the second rakah Uttering the takbir, heading to smith. So saying Allahu Akbar, um, other than the opening takbir, to go into ruku and the sajdas. And then she says, Ya Allah, liman hamida, okay, uh, and, and Rabbana lak al hamd, if you're praying behind an imam and so forth. And this is all for the imam, and it should be audible so that the people can follow. Um, the grasping the knee, women close their fingers whilst in ruku. Uh, bow being slight and knees being bent so we differentiate between the two and then uttering the ruku and prostration tasbih three times um, so you could if you were to recite nothing the prayer would be valid as long as you prostrate and if you were to recite longer it would be fine too um and um i is are you guys okay is i can see i just seen something on the side about video it seems to cut out um it, it, uh, moderators is it a, is it a is it a serious issue or is it some people sometimes okay that's good because it's sometimes people's own uh, internet and then you need to either get other people to get off you know the wi-fi like i've got the other you know i turn my wi-fi off because that can affect and mine's plugged in as well and so yeah you, you might need to get the people to get off their wi-fi now 
Allah Allah Ya Rab Naam Okay so in, um, Standing after the Ruku Sajjas with the, You know With the knees Hands and nose The order reverse When coming out Placing the face Between the hands In the Sajda It's recommended For the heels To touch Whilst in Sajda Toes curled And so forth So I'm going to Jump to You know I'm going to I'm going to Skip this last slide Because I want, It's all going to be repeated And probably Taking too long On this Okay so if I go, I'll go here. Let's look at this now. Now um, I'm going to move all the questions up, which I can do, which is awesome. And inshallah, nothing comes up. So I can see this nice and large. Okay, Bismillah. Um, so now look, these are the postures. Okay, this is quite cool. Okay, so what you've got is the posture, and then you have the action. Okay, um, and then you've got a, basically a description of the action and of of the posture. And then you've got things that are obligatory, things that are necessary, those elements of the prayer that are sunnah. Again, we'll look at this now. So um, just to just to make sure I don't get this wrong, let me just go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So I just want to keep that in mind so I make sure that I get it. So we've got about five minutes for each one, okay? Um, and so here we go, Bismillah. Timer on. Let me put timer on. So I just don't mess this up. Bismillah. Um, Allahumma salli ali. Timer starting. Okay. Bismillah. Stop watching. Okay. So now what you've got is um, you've got the opening takbir. Okay. Allahu Akbar. Um, so you, you stand and you say the opening takbir. So the standing okay, during the obligatory fard prayer is one, if one is able to do so, is fard. So it, they said standing obligatory for fard prayers and for the wajib prayers, where you have a dispensation, right? Um, like the sunnah mu'akkad, you must still stand for sunnah mu'akkad. But if someone decides to sit and pray, the prayer will be valid, okay? It wouldn't be valid for the fard wajib. I'm not sure what category that falls in. Like if somebody... I think it's like the fard, but I can't remember. And so here, um, and so and that's saying that in sunnah prayers, if you wanted to sit and pray, you could do so, um, but it'd be makruh for sunnah mu'akkadahs. Sunnah non mu'akkad, non emphasized sunnahs and nawafil prayer, it's up to you. The reward is halved, okay? The reward is less um, for the one who chooses to sit and pray. Um, uttering the takbir itself is a necessary component, but the actual um, here we should also add that praising God, okay, with some type of praise um, here in this box, here in the fodder box, um, it, sh it should be there. That, that's obligatory. And raising hands parallel to the ears with the fingers naturally spaced, palms facing the Qibla. That's a prophetic sunnah, and it's, and it's an emphasized sunnah of the Prophet, and women raising their hands to the shoulders. So now this is really good because now you're breaking it down, you're dismantling it, right? Okay. You're piece by piece, you're able to see exactly what each of these actions mean. And I think this is empowering. If you are able to understand these slides and you're able to understand what each component of the prayer, what its weight is, okay, you, you'll find it easier to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the practical fiqh element. Why? Because you won't get confused because you'll know exactly what you've done wrong. Is that clear? Um Placing hands below the navel, okay, and qiyam position, okay. So this now, once I've done this, the least level of qiyam uh, standing is that if the hands are stretched, they should not reach the knee. But some people can't do that. They've, they've got a, you know, a bent back, they're old, they're sick, they have an excuse for why they're walking like that and even praying like that. That would be a dispensation. They would be excused. It's out of their control. So that wouldn't be an issue, okay. Whoever is able to, if they don't do that, then that becomes a problem. We don't have necessary components when it comes to standing, you know, or holding the hands. It's either it's a fart obligatory or it's sunnah. Is that clear? So if I don't stand and I'm able to, my prayer is invalid. And if I can't, if I don't hold my hands and I'm able to, my prayer is valid and it will be makru um, disliked. Believe it's not makru uh, tahrimi. After having, we don't have, so we said no necessary equipment. After having uttered takbir, again, raising the hands, folding the hands without dropping them, 
we mentioned the dropping earlier on, didn't we? And placing your hands beneath the navel, grasp the wrist of the left hand with your right hand. So the right goes over the left, okay? Um, the, uh, so, so the right over the left, just remember that. And you also have that when you're putting the, uh, uh, what is it, the, the coffin on the shroud for the deceased, that even to the extent, you know, when you're folding over a piece of paper, you fold the left uh, over the body first, and then the right goes over the top. These are etiquettes. These are things that embellishments, okay, they are important because the Prophet either did them or we've taken them from our early predecessors. So they're, they're, they're deserving of that respect because they were the closest to the time of the Messenger of God and they um, are the most God-fearing people and, the, and, and then they had the most pristine religion, you know, religious practices. And reciting Thana, okay, um, once, you, you're, once you're holding your hand, you read, you read the Thana, and that's a sunnah, okay? So um, in the first raka, you know, only reading thana, um, and the iftitah prayer, dua or the stif, if, um, dua or the stiftah, uh, okay? In the opening of the prayer um, supplication, okay? Um, so that's sunnah. Cool. We're on time for, what is it? Um, four minutes and 35 seconds. Jump to the next slide. So it's good to get ahead. The, um, so now you've got your standing, you recite the ta'awud, a'udhu billahi min shaitan then the basmala, bismillah rahman, and then you do the rest, reciting, okay? So standing during obligatory fard prayers, if one is able to do so, okay? So this ta'awud is always, it's not obligatory. The only thing here that is obligatory is that you continue to stand if you're able to do so. Um, uttering the opening takbir, Allahu Akbar, okay, this has come slightly further ahead, okay? In the first um only, so you're going to read, um, that I think this is probably it should be above in the in the, in the, the slide before. Um, in the first raka unit only, a yud, reading a'udhu billah. This only happens in the opening unit. You don't have it in the second and the third and in the fourth. Like it's only in the opening. If somebody did recite in the second, third, and fourth, they won't break their prayer. The prayer will be valid. It would not also, as far as I understand, um, you know, make the, the forgetful prostration binding because. They would have, you know, they, they, they're delaying an action. No, it wouldn't fall into that. It would just be praise, but not in its place. Okay, praise of God, that's not in its place, or supplication, that's not in its place. And so, seeking protection by reciting the ta'awud. Um, reciting the basmala, well, basmala is short for Bismillah rahman rahim and ta'awud is short for a'awud billah min shaitan rajim. You would do that right after that, okay? Um, and then it's not fard and it's not wajib. And you would say it silently, okay. In some madhabs, in the Shafi school, they read it loudly, and again, they've taken that from the Prophet. And we respect that. The Hanafi madhab, the Sahaba that we take our fiqh from, like Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud, what we and what we what we what they've transmitted to us is that he recited Bismillah silently. And then you recite the Fatiha, okay? So you read Bismillah in every single raka'ah when uh, in the first rakah after a'udhu billah, in the second, third, and fourth, it would be the opening thing that you say as soon as you stand up for the prayer, um, with the exception of the prayer of tasbih. So the tasbih, you might remember, you wouldn't say this first. As you get up, you do the tasbih, and then you read bismillah, and then you read the, uh, the, the fatiha. Um, if you're not sure what the surat of tasbih, it's not a bad idea to google it and find out how to pray it's one of the most magnificent um, prayers of our religion okay it's a prayer that is optional and it has immense immense spiritual benefits now and 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 something else that has immense spiritual benefits i was um, speaking to some family members i was saying to them how since I've started to read Salawat on the level on you know this sort of ten thousand a week, I have never experienced so much goodness in my life. It's just incredible. You might say, "Well, what about Liverpool?" Well, it's, Liverpool is just a thing that, Alhamdulillah, you know, it's not my life. You get it. But, but when I look at my my life, you know, and 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 what I'm getting out of it, opportunity to serve people, help people. You know, these are gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, the, the amount of, you know, goodness that's come to me 
in the last few months. I really can't remember another time. And it's sort of it's something that came to me today that, the, that there's either, there's, you know, of course, we've all got prayers of people behind us, which is good. But there's for sure something that I'm doing, which I never used to do. And it has to be the salawat. And the Prophet gave this guarantee that whoever recites salawat uh, profusely will, you know, get rid of all their worries and take care of all of their needs. So I, I, I said this to my niece and she said, I've got the same thing as well. I'm experiencing the similar. So guys, if you're struggling with financially, mentally, I'm telling you, get on. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just read that. Read that a lot. And reciting Qira'ah, that's a picnic then, my teacher, that's a picnic. I go, what, you know, when you go off and want a story and then come back. Reciting Qira'ah, okay, the actual Qira'ah um, is Surah Al-Fatiha, and the obligatory requirement is to recite one verse in any two units of an obligatory prayer. So that's the obligatory part. The reciting of the Surah Al-Fatiha as a whole should really be here, I would say. Okay, exactly, that's where it should go. Um, and recite at least one verse in every unit of a necessary sunnah optional prayer and um, so this also should go here so this is a, a, an over uh, was it um an oversight from me because i was supposed to check this that should go here and this one should go here as well so because the fatiha itself is wajib and ayah is fard and, and an additional surah an additional ayah to that fatiha is also wajib should go here it is offensive for the one praying behind an imam to recite the surah al-fatiha, whether in a loud or silent prayer. Yeah, you should remain silent. If you find yourself struggling, you just can't focus, then in that situation, you may read it um, in your heart. And if you find you're still struggling, then may, you may read it you know, on your tongue, um, if need be. Um, uttering the amin. Okay, amin after the fatiha, whether you're praying behind an imam or praying by yourself is sunnah. Um, and then the I mean in a low volume after recite Surah Fatiha. And there's a benefit here that if the, the angels when they when you pray, the angels listen to your Quran. And if they say I mean and you say I mean at the same time, then inshallah your du'as are accepted. A reciting qira'ah uh, after Surah Fatiha. So after you finish reading Surah Fatiha, you say the I mean, then you add an additional um chapter, an additional verse, okay. Um, that additional chapter of verse, um, it, could, it it won't be fard and well done. Do you see here? That's what I said in the earlier slide. It should have been in this in this box here. Um, so any short surah, Qul huwa Allahu ahad al beautiful surah. You must say I read it all the time. So well, alhamdulillah. If you can mix it up, it's better, right? We're selling cakes for charity, and inshallah, you'll probably receive an email to encourage you to so come help us raise some money for Syria. We put the same cake in a box, right? It's nice, but it's not the same as having four different options, right? And so here, um, I say to you, mix it up. Go memorize some more surahs, okay? You say, I can't memorize. It's so hard. So keep listening to it. Keep listening to it. Keep reciting it. Keep listening to it. And I'm sure at some point, inshallah ta'ala, it'll stick in your mind. Um, or three short verses. So you'll read, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ اللَّهُ صَمَدُ لَمْ يَلِدُ وَلَمْ يُولَدُ that's three, and you didn't add the fourth one, that would also fulfill the necessary components of, you know, adding an additional, um, you know, a surah or part of a surah to the Fatiha. Um, in the first two units of all obligatory prayers. So you must read a Fatiha and a, a surah, an additional chapter or some verses in every single obligatory prayer. Okay, in the first two units of every single obligatory prayer. So, so that means I'm not going to read a fajr. There's only two. Al-Dhuhr in the third and fourth, this doesn't apply. Um, and so you'll learn shortly um, that you don't, you know, you read only a fatiha in the third and fourth of a fourth prayers. Asr, same thing, third and fourth. No, it doesn't apply. Maghrib in the third rakat doesn't apply. Isha in the third and fourth rakat doesn't apply. So this necessary component, okay, is only in the fard. Okay, is any in the obligatory parts of the prayer or obligatory prayers, pardon me. We don't have an emphasized sunnah to this. I mean, you could add emphasized sunnahs of reading certain surahs or reading a complete surah and, and the orders and so forth, but um, that's fine if we leave this. And then the yatrim, the takbir, which would be the takbir, um, the, the, the takbir to go into the 
um, ruku, uh, the takbir that takes you into uh, a bow. Okay, this takbir is sunnah. You may find sometimes you go in and you don't say it, or you're an imam reading in their house and there's family praying behind you and you didn't say it loud. These things can happen because here it's in the sunnah category. If you find you missed it, your prayer is fine. You praying behind an imam. Imam said Allahu Akbar. You didn't say nothing. You just went in. Okay, you missed it. Okay, and if you're still in ruku and you remembered, you can still say it. Um, can you? I, actually, it should be said when going in. When you're in the ruku, you missed it. In the ruku, you will only uh, you would um, focus on sending praises or was it to speak glorifying God? Hey, I'm ahead. Look, thirteen minutes. So I'm ahead. I've got an extra minute here. I might be able to fit in another story. Ruku bowing. Once you're in the bow after having said the takbir. Obligatory in every unit of prayer and is fulfilled by inclining and back, inclining the back such that the hands can reach the knees. So the bow is fun. So if you find you went into, you went from the bow, you know, you went straight into sajda, for example, okay, then you know, then you know you missed a fart, okay, of your prayer. And if you happen to do that, okay, because you haven't finished your prayer, like the sajda, you remember the sajda. You've just moved it from its place. I went, Allahu Akbar, I went straight into sajda. Oh, Mr. Bow. Okay, so now carry on. Okay, carry on. In the second raka, I had two bows. Okay, so then you would have moved the bow from its place. And because you moved it from its place, you've still, um, what is it, performed it. However, you haven't performed it in its place. And yeah, I feel like I can hear you saying, yeah. So just so you're right, you'll do a forgetful prostration at the end of the prayer. So in terms of the bowing itself, men grip their knees with their fingers spread, keeping their legs and back straight and the le uh, head level with their posterior. A, a, a lower back, okay, and the back itself should be level uh, along with the head if possible. Okay, not everybody can do that. Again, with this, there's a lot of flexibility. What's easiest for you? You try your best to do that, but some people say, I can't do that, right? I, can't, you know, I just can't do that anymore. It's fine. Do what you can. Uttering the tasbih of ruku and the glorification of bowing when you're in the bow. Subhana Rabbi al azim Subhana Rabbi al azim Subhana Rabbi al azim Three times at the least. We don't have uh, the fart. The obligatory part of the sajda is for you to remain in the sajda for how long it takes to say, Subhanallah. Okay. However, in terms of the reciting of the glorification, the glorifying, there is no minimum amount. It's the sunnah is three. So if you only said it once or twice, then you've missed the sunnah, or it's imperfect. But but the three is perfect, and it's better to prolong it. Okay, it's better to add uh, or give yourself an opportunity to read more. Okay, more tasbihs now, and then you got um, reciting. So once you've done that, whilst you're in the bowing, you should keep your eyes, um, you know, on one's gaze on one's feet. So I would say to our dear Irfan to add this same point above as well for standing, that when you're standing, you're looking at your uh, place of prostration. That's the best place to look. And like we've said many times before, if you happen to find yourself looking here and looking there, it goes against the etiquette of the prayer. But it doesn't pray. It doesn't break the prayer. Exactly. So if somebody's, you know, if somebody's looking, gives somebody the eyes. Okay. It's part of that. Every single time I teach this point, I always, without failure, it seems like it. It takes me back. What is it? What year is it? Twenty one. It takes me back twenty three years. And and when I was in a boarding school in Birmingham. There used to be this dear uncle of ours, Bangladeshi uncle, who would walk past, and he was a lovely man. But if you didn't know him, he he looked quite daunting, and he had a lot of awe in his face, and he'd give you the eyes. <laughs> so, uh, actually, no, it was, it was the other way. If he was praying, you're walking, you looked at him, he'll follow you, give you the eyes like this. Subhanallah, that doesn't break the prayer. Okay, Up. again, it goes against the etiquette. The etiquette is that you focus, so you can apply this across the board you know like if i'm sitting with family right and i'm talking to my parents i'm on my phone and i find myself doing this because i feel like i'm really busy but it's not perfect it's not right really you know it's it's it's, it's you know i'm talking to my parents i'm still on my phone it's not the best thing to do you know i make do i can 
stop doing that. I mean, I should leave my phone in the car when I'm visiting them. That's beautiful because now I'm giving them their full due. And the same with one's spouse. Now you find spouses both are chatting, they're both on their phones. Everyone's busy, really. I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to somebody else, right? This is my quality time with you. Quality time should be put your phones away and talk. Do you get it? So you benefit from one another and you give each other the due respect. But um, have you seen what's happening? It's not just here, right? It's not just me who does that. You know, it's, it's all over the place and it's not right. Whatever people say is not the right way. You know, it, it, life was never like this. Why am I busy myself to this extent where it's harming my relationship? So it's a deficiency. It's a, a it's bad adab and inshallah ta'ala Allah gave us topic to get rid of it. I think I've fallen behind. Have I? Like a lot. A catch up. Standing from Ruku, you say Sami Allah Muhammad. This saying, the uttering of Sami Allah Muhammad is Sunnah. So if you happen to miss it, you carry on. Okay. And then when you one you once you're up, you say, um, what is it, reciting the Smith Sami Allah Muhammad was raised from the Ruku. Um, this is a sunnah, so that's well point uh, well placed there. That's correct. We don't have a wajib here. <laughs> Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allahu Akbar. Um, so now, okay, you have... Um, Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. So when you stand up from the ruku, okay, you say, Rabbana lak alhamd. And so once you're upright, and this is where another fault is that people go like this very quickly. Or quickly, part of it, and then what happens is they miss the wajib of being tranquil and still. Um, standing upright after the court, remaining motionless is a necessary component of the prayer. Remaining motionless, stillness, where your body and your limbs are still. Okay, that's really important. And then you say, Rabbana lak alhamd, or Rabbana, uh, what uh, is it? Rabbana lak alhamd, or Rabbana walak alhamd. Allahumma rabbana lak alhamd And if you were to add the dua Rabbana lak alhamd Hamdan kathiran Tayyiban mubarak bi It wouldn't harm it Inshallah ta'ala So um, It skipped a beat And then some people Do not straighten their back And this is an issue So be careful of that And then you've got um, Reciting tahmid And say um, Rabbana lak alhamd And you say this silently Before going to sajda there's nothing else that I like. You may add other things, but it's better not to in the fard prayer. You may do that for sure in the nawafil, nafil prayers or sunnah prayers. Then you say the takbir to go into the sajda. At this point, there's no obligation um, and no necessary component to. And you say the takbir before changing postures between it was integral prayer. But you say it before you sort of move, or you say it at the point of moving down. And this takbir is sunnah, and it's better to elongate it um, for however long it takes you to get into the next posture and once you're into the sajda in the prostration which is obligatory twice for every unit of the prayer with at least a toe of one of the two feet should be touching the ground if you find you can't get your toe on the ground then you can get the face of the foot the metatarsal that part or even the toes the face of the toes touching the ground that's cool that's good that's enough okay if i can get the tip of the toe i get the face of the foot that's absolutely fine. But some aspect of the foot, it might be the side of the foot, okay? And one foot at least should be touching the ground. If you find both feet are off the ground and they're off the ground for the entire prostration, that will unfortunately lead to your prayer being void. Okay, no. Why? Because you would have missed a an integral, a fard element of the prayer. Um, so placing most, and then you've got placing most of the forehead, um, the nose, both hands, knees and feet on the ground. Um, because that's how we prostrate and in prostration okay what do we have in prostration such that descend knees first then the hands then place the face between the hands and this is all part of the sunnah so if you found you always go knees first or you go hands first okay so pardon, you always find yourself going hands first then you're going against the correct adab and correct etiquette of the sunnah and men separate their stomachs from their thighs you might say, my stomach is so big, there is it's impossible. <laughs> that is impossible, right? Then lose your stomach, oh, then weird. Elbows from the sides and the forearms from the ground. So this is all, um, all, all part of the beautiful way in which the Prophet of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, pro will worship his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Women do the opposite, eh, meaning that they go down the same way, the knees, hands, and then the nose and the forehead, 
Um, but then Allahumma salli wa sallam barika wa sallam Muhammad, they do the opposite when they get up. Uh, uh, when they're in the sajda, that's where their prayer slightly changes, exactly, because their their prayer is compact okay, and they're close and so forth. Now, women do the opposite, keeping as low as possible, reciting tasbih, dhikr and sajda three times in subhana rabbi al-a'la, um, in the dhikr, like we said in the ruku, you say subhana rabbi al-a'la, subhana rabbi al-a'la, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. I was listening to Sheikh Aslam, Allah protective, and um, he was talking about how when the Prophet Sallallahu was born, the first thing he did was he prostrated. So he was, as a baby, was physically strong enough to go into a prostration. And that tells you something, because even later on in his life, if something worried him or something pleased him, he would rush to the prayer, either to, to take energy and and, 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 and and complain to God or he would turn to God to show gratitude and so the pro, the prostration is a super gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this nation and really we should make the most of it we should find ways inshallah ta'ala to um, enjoy that prostration you get it and elongate the prostration and find you know that um, like Find you know find a find that you're close to God in that prostration. If you can't find yourself close to Allah in a prostration, it's going to be very difficult, I guess, to find yourself close to God, you know, anywhere else. That is the place. The Prophet of God, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, on the day of judgment, you know, when he will and he'll be the only one who's allowed to do this, is he will fall in prostration to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And then he'll be granted the great intercession. So, what do you find? You find the prostration is the key to locked doors. It opens locked doors. And that's how he said, Yeah, Rasulullah. And he came sad, like his heart broke. He looked sick. The Prophet thought he was ill. He said, What's wrong with me, Athoban? You're not well. Because I'm well, I'm fine, but I just worried. Worried about what? That when, you know, Yom Qiyama, you know, Allah will enter you into paradise and you'll be in the higher stations. Like, you know, actually, before it said, because I, I'm restless in my house. Like, then I've got to come and see you. When I see you and behold you, then I'm at peace again. And it's Ya Rasulullah, on the day of judgment, you know, Allah will enter you into Jannah and put you in the higher stations. And if I enter, right, you know, if I enter, then I'm not going to be on the same level as you. And that was worrying him because he wanted to be with him here and there. Then he asked for some help. He said, like, what can I do? And he said to him, do lots of sajdas. And he said, you help me to help you. How? By doing lots of sajdas. Wow. <laughs> that's, why, that's where the key is. So if you haven't got your fault prayer in place, what are you waiting for? Like, are you waiting for a day that Allah you know, paralyzes you so you can never prostrate again. Is that what you're waiting for? And what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for an angel of death to visit you, you know? Why are you waiting for? Are you waiting for, you know, so-and-so to pass away who's dear to you before it hits you, right? And then you're going to change? What are you waiting for? Don't wait. You're going to do good things and do them quickly. I was sitting in between the two sides of just a position. Um, it's a wadi because you sort of, You've got to get up to be to friendship between the two prostrations. So now getting up far, so far up that you're you're away from the sajda, but then also stay, stay motionless for a moment before you go back in again is a sort of the, the wajib. Uh, so if you find yourself coming up and going back down again too fast, then you owe a forgetful prostration. Some people do the second sajda before they properly sit upright after the first sajda, missing a wajib. Yeah, this, this is a, a this is a habit most likely, and it's connected to it's them as a person. You know, they just rush and they hurry things, and there's this hasteness, or they're hastily in their behavior, and and it's gonna they probably find it in the ruku as well. They're same, they're the same in the ruku in the bowing, get up and they fly back, and they and it's probably a, 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 a habit. A, a habitual thing with everything, you know, work, food, and so forth. Now, sitting in the iftirash position, um, and you've got men sitting in between the two prostrations is different to the women, uh, but both 
sit like they sit in the um the first sitting of the final sitting men sit on the left foot with the right foot prop is it propped up on um the toes with the face direction to break if you can sit like that perfect your left foot is flat your toes are curled to the kibla and your right foot is uh, upright and then it's sort of and the toes of his kibla if possible brilliant you get a face your face and your body and everything towards the holy house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you can't do that, then whatever is possible. Some people can't sit like that. Some people can't sit like that other than impossible. So they sit however it's possible for them, right? Because they just can't do that. Even as an imam, there might be some imams who can never sit like that. Probably snap their ankle if you ask them to do that. So you do what you can. And so and the women you can see you can see the left foot sort of popping beneath the right shin okay so that's the best way and that foot could go underneath the shin and it can also go above the shin both are fine and if you find you can't sit like that then you sit well uh, in whichever way is easiest for you and prostrate a second time before getting up so you have two sessions both obligatory performing says that on a carpet making sure it, it, it's, it, it's of course the prayer is best on, on 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 you know on earth but with with carpets you have to be careful on rugs that they're not too thick and if they happen to be very heavy and thick then you can make sure you get the prostration firm on there by the way on that i might as well drop this on you that i'm trying to raise some money for buying some prayer mats from the prayer mat company by sister shafid she owns this company and so i want to give them out to um our revert and convert brothers and sisters so if you're up for sponsoring one for 20 pounds i think it is then drop us an email may allah bless you and make it that a musalla a means of sadaqa jariya continuous charity for each other people enjoy their prayers and, and and worship allah on it for a long time so yeah you heard me correctly pull out some money people um and then you've got um so you're gonna make sure if I pull, um, I don't have a prayer mat here that I can really use, but some are really thick. When you're praying on a mattress, you can be careful because that's too soft. The, the, the ground is to be firm. So you're going to have to really push your forehead down and, you know, to the point where you find it's now firm. Okay. And so be careful on very, very thick rugs and carpets. And then you stand up, okay, for the second rug and you stand up with your. Um, was that forehead, nose, then the hands, and then and then, then the knees? And but you might find I can't stand up. I need to use my hands. Then it is what it is. So this qiyam standing up, okay, you have to do that because that's the only way you get to the second rakah. Uh, sit after the second prostration of the second cycle. If we jump and uh, we finish this and we repeat the same process again, and then after, if this happens to be the second cycle, then I'm going to sit for the prostration of the second cycle and I sit. And I read the testification. So it's a sitting for how long it takes to read the testification. The testification of the at wa salawatu, the supplication that is there. And then also reading the supplication, both of them are necessary. Okay, and behind an imam, um, they're also necessary, but if you miss it, no forget for prostration. So that's why I just raise up from the prostration, um, face first, then hands, and then the knees, as I mentioned. Um, this order is sunnah and not wajib. The subsequent rakahs are the same as the first, starting with Basmala and Surah Fatiha. The second rakah will be the same like that, and the third and the fourth. Sitting in the rakah after the two sajdas and reciting the shahud, okay, in the first ka'dah. Ka'dah is your first sitting, okay. So here, um, the sitting after the second prostration. Of the second cycle, can you see? Is this this is the same here, isn't it? This is the same. Um, I'm not raising, I'm not sure why this is maybe this should have been left here, that shouldn't be there. Raise the index finger when negating other deities, and then and then you bring it down for affirmation. This is sunnah. If someone forgetfully recites Salawat Ibrahim, you read Atahiyat in the first sitting, and then you kept going. Okay, you were supposed to stand up. You say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Um, so this would then, this would mean that you've delayed standing up, and delaying standing up means that you've got to do it, forget for prostration. 
Allah, after the shahad in the first Ka'dah, Father Witter and Sunnah Ma'akadah, so the sah will become necessary. So, all two and three, all three and four Raka'ahs are prayers like the fourth fard of Dhuhr, Asr, and Isha, and all the three fards like the wit, was it Maghrib, and three Witter, and all the four Sunnahs that you have. You don't have odd number Sunnahs, you have either two or four. Uh, and the Shafi mother, you do have odd number, by the way. So, if, you know, there your water is going to have this first sitting. Okay. And so, the first sitting, if you delay getting up, then you will always have a forgetful prostration. Allahumma salli alayhi. Hey, guys, I have five minutes. And how many slides do I have left? Oh, wah, wah, wah. Wow, this, this is good, man. This is a good innovation. I, I better let me finish and then we. Then I start saying, MashaAllah, to myself. Then you get up, what is this, third rakah? Once you've read your tahiyyat, you're going to stand up for the third rakah. You rise up from the prostration, okay, by the knees. Okay, you stand up. Stand for the third and fourth cycles in the noon. And noon is the dhuhr, afternoon. Um, be late afternoon, asr, and the night prayer is maghrib and isha. And only the third cycle in the sunset prayer. So, um, yeah, you, the other ones, you wouldn't do that. If you did, you'd go sit back down again and then, we let the hiyat and do a forgetful prostration for standing when there was no need to stand. Okay. All, all actions in the third and fourth cycles are the same as the first two supergoratory prayers. Yeah, because here, that means that I need to read a fatiha and a surah. Okay. In the third and the fourth rakaza. And here you should also add all actions in the third and fourth cycles are the same as the first two in witter uh, and the three witter and the supergoratory prayers the sunnah sunnah muakkadah prayers because you must recite a fatiha and a surah in the third rakas of witter and also the um, all the sunnahs and you might say i didn't know that well just fix it going forward okay and and whatever's been done is done because you may have found yourself that you when you were praying sunnahs you only recited the Fatiha in the third and fourth rakahs, and in Witter you only recited the Fatiha. And we'll say, well, because you recited the Fatiha, you've done the Wajib, and for sure you've done the Fard of reading. The Fard was, it will only be in the first rakahs. You've done the Wajib of reading um, of the Fatiha, so you, it's fine, the prayer is done. And the final sitting, um, which will always be, you know, at the end of the prayer, whether it's after two rakahs on the two or the three, three, in the fourth right so sit for the length of recitation of the testification of the faith that's the far so if i read nothing and i just sat there my sitting is the you know ticks the box the actual reading okay the testification of faith okay is a a, a necessary component so sitting for how long it takes to read the far uh, sit, sitting for how long it takes to read this here tahiyyat is far and the actual tahiyyat is wajib Raising the fingers before, then recite the blessings from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is called Salat Ibrahimi, um, and followed by a supplication. This is all from the Sunnah. So uh, if I'm in a harash, I might miss these two. And my prayer is valid. It gives salams a run. Okay. And so reading um, the Salawat Ibrahimi and Rabbi Ja'ani, and if when I don't know Rabbi Ja'ani, any other dua, which is from the Quran or the Sunnah, like Rabbana Tina Fid Dunya, or it's equivalent and then once you get to the end okay you you make a you make a salutation salams to your right and the left and you're honoring these angels that sit on your shoulders these noble scribes that record everything that we do and also if you are leading the prayer you're also going to intend individuals who are praying to your right and the left and those who are right behind you you're intending them on both sides so you make a supplication peace be upon Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. No, you don't say wa barakatuh. And then you end the prayer by uttering the salam twice, right and left. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Allowed if one is in the imam, the first whilst turning the head to the right and the second in a lower voice um, whilst turning to the left and intending greeting to the angels and those praying with one of prayer in the congregation. Some people have a unique way of doing this. They like, they sort of raise their hand and go, Ooh. You know, they go really far. So I, I, I'm not sure why. I think they should it's just, you know, there's no need to raise your head. You just give us salams. 
and and then you sort of you know when you're standing you look to the ground where you're going to prostrate when you're bowing you look towards your toes when you stand up from the bowing you look towards the sajda when you're in the sajdas you sort of look towards your nose and in the at you look towards your lap and in the salam you look to your shoulders Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wow, look, 8.59 We nailed it I'm so, so happy Alhamdulillah Alright guys, bring it on What you got? God help me Ah, uh, what do we have? Yeah <laughs> Salams all Okay, yes, salams all If you are not in a jamaat do you not say Rabbana lak alhamd? And so this question is about if I'm praying in a in a in a congregational prayer, the Imam says, Sami Allah Diman Hamida. Okay. Um Allah hears the one who prays them. And then at that point, Imam and the followers all say Rabbana lak alhamd. And um and if you're praying alone, you say both. You say Sami Allahu liman hamida and you say Rabbana lakul hamd. So you say both. For a woman, um, if the forehead is covered, okay, yeah, because you can feel the ground. So something coming over, like the um, like the uh, the hijab is not an issue. It's better to sort of have it slightly back. But if you fear your hair will show, then then leave it where it is. Is there any requirement for which surahs can be read? Does the order of length have any bearing? For example, reading. Surah Kothar in the first rakah, Surah Kafir in the second rakah. Um, so, and is there any advice in the Surah order? For example, if you read Surah Feed in the first rakah, can you read Surah Mount Moon second? So, yes, there is. So, the Prophet Sallallahu had his particular way, um, and, and he's left this, these sunnahs for us. Like, if we read certain surahs in certain prayers during the week, but generally speaking, here, you know, you you should try to maintain the order when you're reading. So, if you know the order will be chronolo- chronological, the mushaf, not chronological revelation, but chronological as you find it in the Quran. So you have Surah One, Surah Two, up to Surah 114. So um, I shouldn't read Surah 114 in the first unit and then Surah 113 in the second. I should try to reverse it the other way around. So what I should always read. Anything before 114, you know, I try to maintain that order. So if I read 110, then I read 111 in the next, and I don't read 109. So that's one thing. The other thing is that you should try to um, make sure that you're not, when you're reading these surahs, that you try to, you don't leave a single surah in between. So if I read surah 109 in the first unit, then and, and then I leave 110 in the second read 111, leaving a single chapter in between the two is deemed to be sort of bad etiquette, you know, I'm sort of cold shouldering, you know, I'm leaving this one out. And that's the, the, just sort of this is more embellishment, more etiquette, propriety towards Quran. So one shouldn't do that. If you're gonna do if you're gonna jump some sort of then you say you should always leave two in between. So if I give you an example of um, I read in the first surah, the first rak'ah, and the surah that follows it, okay, is um, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْ And so if I missed that, and then in the second rak'ah I read um, تَبَّتْ يَدَى That would be disliked, okay? But if I left إِذَا جَاءَ And then I, I surah Nasr, and I left uh, surah Al-Lahab تَبَّتْ يَدَى And I read surah Ikhlas that's fine. Okay, it's not clear. So it's not, and I'm not leaving one school by itself. And the, the Prophet did that a lot in Nafal prayers generally, whether it's to, to uh, like even Sunnahs, the two Sunnahs of Fajr, um, all, all sort of, you know, what is it? Salatul, prayer of guidance, um, prayer of greeting the masjid, the two rakahs, may Allah grant us again this honor of two rakahs, two units for greeting the what is it? The Ihram prayer. Okay, before you do the minor and major uh, pilgrimage, you know, he would read Al Kafirun and Surah Ikhlas. Could you read Surah Al Kawthar and Salah? Yeah, of course you can. Why? And because Surah Al Kawthar. Inna a'atayna kal Kawthar, fa salli li Rabbi kawanhar. 
إن شانئك هو الأبتر. So you've got three ayahs. So that's like the bam. Uh, it's a complete sunnah. The bare minimum would be like an additional ayah, but that would be absolutely fine. In such that the heels should be touching. Uh, ideally, but not necessarily. It's better to keep them together because um, there's it's you know like there's more covering, more adab there. Okay, especially because that that's the area from where you could see somebody's aura. Their private parts, and so it's sort of better to keep them together, from what I understand. What can you advise about Sadr Shukur? Sadr Shukur, we, we have, you know, if you want to be grateful to God, there's in the prayer two rakas. Two complete units of prayer is a complete shukur. That's the best way to thank God. Um, and so that that's, that's complete shukur. When you go down with your hands on your knees, do you say, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Subhana Rabbi al Subhana Rabbi al Aldi, um, so you have to forgive me here. I, I'm not. Is, are you? Is it Arzim Arzim? So look, if you do say that for me, both of what you've just written are very similar. Um, I'm trying to work out what you what the difference between the two are in the transliteration. So you say Subhan when you go into bowing, you say Subhana Rabbi Al Aldim in bowing. When you go into prostration, you say Subhana Rabbi Al A'la, and the Alzim is a Dha. Okay, you put your tongue behind it. It's a Dha Dha. Okay, and say Al Alzim. Okay, a my Lord, the glory be to my Lord, the Mighty. Okay, uh, the Magnificent. So that's what you say. And if you can mix the mix them up, then you would have missed the Sunnah. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um. Another question is if you do not raise your index finger in the mic. Yeah, of course it is. So if you don't raise your index finger in the first sitting and the last sitting, in both of those places, it's it's the prophetic sunnah to raise them. So if you if you found that you forgot or you never have because for whatever reason, then your prayer is valid. Why? I don't know. Because in that um, in the um, in the few slides before, we said um, raising your index finger to negate. Okay, and then bringing them to affirm is a is a sunnah, is a prophetic sunnah. It's not necessary a component of the prayer, nor is it a, nor an obligatory component of the prayer. Um, if any of you, if any of your clothing has an animal, cartoon print, etc., is a prayer, a prayer is still valid. If not, if you wear a juba, um, does that make it valid? If it's so small that you can't really make it out, from what I understand, it's fine, or it doesn't have a, um, like a face where you there's no eyes and there's no nose and it's just like a an outline as far as i understand that's not a problem as well and um, if you find that you can identify what type of animal it is then that becomes sort of macro you know you got mickey mouse t-shirt you know that that's quite clear so if i don something on top of it then that would sort of negate the image because it's covered and then there would be no karaha in that there would be no dislike element to that prayer that'd be absolutely fine hmm. on that note if you have a tattoo for example um it's better to cover but if you find you can't cover it then you know your prayer will be valid what time is it nine or so if you are in a super rush then fulfill all the for either miss some why does that mean a set of service was required you have to justify being in a super rush. In a super rush, you know, you can have a super rush where I, I've only got enough time to pray my father's prayer. Like I've only got a minute. Then in those type of situations, you do the you, you do the bare minimum. You get it's out of necessity, and then and I would repeat my prayer later on in the next prayer time, just out of you know precaution. And so you know where what you shouldn't do is just miss it. So if you ever need to exercise or apply, you know, some of these, I don't know, tricks, I don't think they're tricks, I think they're just dispensations, then you should, because it's it's grave, you know, it's more, it's more grave to miss it, miss your prayer, right? So this is the best thing you can do. And then, and go in accordance to that. Like, I don't think there's one, you know, one rule for everyone. Um, so if you ever find you're in that situation, 
sometimes you'll be in a situation where you can only do the fard. Sometimes you're in a situation where you can actually, um, you know, you can do the wajib, but you can't do the sunnahs. So try your best in other situations. However, if you find yourself missing the wajibat, okay, and you have a super short prayer, make it up. If you find yourself missing the sunnahs, then there's no need to repeat it. Um, a woman should not wear a niqab in prayer, and the face should be bare. Hey, she covers her um, head, but not the face. If we just says on the material of our hijab, because the mosque carpet is must and dusty, that's okay. Um, no, it should be fine. Um, it, but it doesn't just be the forehead. But you bring it down so much that your nose goes on it as well. I'm not sure if that's what you'll do. Um, as far as I understand, that part's not a problem at all. As for going like that, then that might be an issue. Because then you're sort of covering your face. Um, I would say buy the, buy the, what is it, the prayer mat company, um, Light Musalla. Do I have it with me? I might have it, you know. I normally carry I carry a musalla with me, right? And so um I might have it. Yay, look, I've got it. I've got it, I've got it. Buy one, buy one of these, look. Allah bless us, Shafid. Awesome idea, you know. Look, I carry it with me wherever I go. Nice and light, you know. Drop it wherever you are. Alhamdulillah. So when I were praying in the university, I carry this with me because when I'm teaching, I need it. There you are. Alhamdulillah. Hey guys, I need to watch Liverpool, man. I've had enough of you lot. It's ten past, bare minimum today. Are we done with the questions? I know you're gonna say there's nothing to watch. If you are reading Maghrib and on the third raka you forget to sit down for the final sitting, or you read the shahud. And then stand up thinking there is a fourth rakah. What do you do? So now, um, listen to this again. It's a really, really good question, okay? So I'm praying Maghrib, okay? And on the third rakah, you forget to sit down. So basically what's happened is I've read three units. And I should sit now because this is where the last, uh, the shahud is. You And it's a fourth component of the prayer. But I don't. I get up for the fourth unit, okay? You're not going to do that because you know it is, you know, the fourth, right? Unless you try to dodge someone, you know, but you, you forget. So you can have two scenarios. Most likely you just don't, you think it's the second, right? Okay, you're getting up for the third, but it's not. It's the fourth, okay? Is that clear? So now, if I get up and then I'm, you know, either I remember right away, right? And then I, if I remember right away, or I remember in the middle of reading the fourth raka, okay? Or I remember in the ruku and even post ruku, okay? Is that clear? As long as I haven't prostrated for the fourth raka, are you with me? Okay, is that clear? As long as I haven't prostrated for the fourth raka, so I get up, I'm supposed to sit after three, but I got up for the fourth, think it's my third. And I. I, at some point, right before prostrating for the fourth raka, at some point, anywhere in that in that time, yeah, I remember I should go straight into a tahiyyat, just sit down and read a tahiyyat alillahi wa salawat wa tayyibat. And what I've done is I've delayed reading this a tahiyyat. Okay, it's still the a tahiyyat is still at the end of the third raka, and because I've delayed it, then I need to do a forgetful prostration. So I do one salam. Two sajjahs come back and read at tahiyyat again, get to the end of the prayer. However, if I added a sajda, right, then I've got four rak'ahs, then my last sitting is gone. Then I complete the four rak'ahs and they've become nafal, my fard becomes void. And then and Allah knows best, and you repeat it again. Last question for tonight. With COVID restrictions in place, we are required to wear a mask and pray. Is that okay? Yeah. You know, with, with, uh, in those type of situations where if you have to do that, then it's absolutely fine because it's out of necessity. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Cool, guys. I like these moderators. They don't throw any more. <laughs> okay. Allah accepted from all of you. I really enjoyed the lesson. Inshallah, you did too. And I went slow intentionally because I, 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 I just not about 
you know, I'm covering, you know, Alhamdulillah, my team are excellent. They've helped me here. And, and, and Air France facilitated so we can just get this lesson through. I think it's one of the most important lessons. Everything else is additional. I think this is the one. Why? Because you sort of look at the prayer, you you revise it two or three times, and you've also looked at, at what each um, action sort of, uh, you know, is, uh, what it weighs. Alhamdulillah. Okay, take care. Um, if you come across a cake, so the email, help me. The more cakes we sell, the more people we help, inshallah ta'ala. And so the cakes are nice. And a plus, I need to speak to my, my wonderful friend, Junaid, and, and see if we can find a way to provide free cakes for a lot of families who just won't be able to afford 12 pounds. So make dua, that's my next big decision. Inshallah, we can pull it off and yeah, everybody has cake, inshallah ta'ala. Um, um, it's just an excuse to have cake, alhamdulillah. And, and, and a wonderful opportunity to help the poor. Okay, um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should get an email at some point during this week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallah wa bihamdiya shada da ilaha illa anta astaghfirku wa atubu ilaik. Alhamdulillah.